Hello, welcome back. What you see in front of you is a simulation I found on the internet called Optical Bench. And the idea of this simulation is you can actually create light sources of various directions along with lenses and mirrors and apertures. And we're going to use this as our launching point into geometrical optics, which looks at things like ray diagrams and ultimately the lens maker's equation, which is a mathematical relationship that will help us to predict where the image is going to be formed. But to start off, let's just get our bearings with the actual simulation. At the top, we've got a choice of, of light sources. One's a beam, and if I click on it, you see that it's, it's kind of like a ray box that you'll find in the lab that just sends parallel light beams from left to right. I can swap directions and go to the other direction. I can sort of push it up at an angle or down. So point being, no matter which way I direct it, the light beams themselves, the light rays themselves are always parallel. The next one is called an object. And that would be similar to a candle flame. And they simply use an arrow in physics just to keep things simple. So the top of the arrow might be the top of the candle flame. This could be anything you're trying to view in an optical de device. It could be a person, a tree, anything. And then we've got a source. Now, all light sources emit rays in an infinite number of directions. So this is sort of more typical. They're only focusing on the rays on the right-hand side. But again, I can sort of spray it around and move it around. And you can see how it looks as I move it up and down. But the nice thing about this one is this is probably our most realistic light source. The light comes off sort of in a spherical pattern in directions all around the light source. So we're going to use this as our starting point. Now we also have choices of lenses and mirrors down below, and we're going to start with a mirror. So when I place a mirror on here, you can see it's got quite a large curvature on the left-hand side, and these two little dots are what's, what are known as the focal points. Now mirrors technically only have one focal point because a mirror is only finished on one side. So this would be our focal point for this particular type of mirror, and we'll discuss why in a second. Now I can change the shape of the mirror by dragging around this focal point. I can make it flatter as I move it further away and a harsher curve as we move it in towards the center. I can also change it. This, this particular mirror is called a concave mirror. The mirrored side is on the left, so it's like a cave. And if I want to make a convex mirror where the mirrored side is also on the left, then it would, I would just simply drag these dots to the other side. So a convex mirror, concave mirror. Now let's see how light behaves on these mirrors. Now I'm going to grab my source. Now remember, the source sends off rays in all kinds of directions. And we know that when light hits a mirror, there's only one rule. The angle of incidence has to equal the angle of reflection. So I'm going to grab my source and put it on the left. And you can see the light rays traveling towards the mirror and bouncing off the mirror. And right in here, we're going to define what is meant by angle of incidence and angle of reflection. But remember, we must draw a normal line. Now, a normal line is always 90 degrees to the surface right where that ray hits. So I have to do a couple of things when I've got this curved surface. First of all, right where the ray hits, I want to see what the tangent line is and take my normal line from the tangent line. The tangent line will be roughly how flat the mirror is, or roughly the angle of the mirror at that point. So once I draw my tangent line, I can draw my normal line going straight through it, and we can see that the angle of incidence coming in is equal to the angle of reflection coming back. And we could do this at any point along the mirror. Now we want to define something called the focal length. And the nice thing about lenses and mirrors, they define the focal length in the same fashion for all devices. And what they do is they get a beam or a source that's parallel. The light rays are parallel. This would be something like what would happen if the sun's rays actually hit this device. Because the sun's so far away, by the time it reaches Earth, we can assume the rays are basically parallel because they're coming from such a huge distance. Now if I bring this source right along my optical rail, you'll see that my parallel rays bounce off the mirror and converge through this point right where my hand is. This point is called the focal point of this particular kind of mirror. And we call this a converging mirror. Now notice that the rays are actually bouncing and hitting this point. So that's very, very intense light at this stage. You could, you could burn something at that point. So because the rays are actually hitting it and actually crossing there, they're physically at that spot, we say this is a real focal point. 
and a real focal length for that matter. Now to measure all our distances in lenses and mirrors, we always go back to the center of the mirror. So in this case, we go back to this imaginary line right where my hand is. At the back of the mirror, imagine if I drew a tangent straight along the back of that mirror, all our distances are going to be from there. So from that location to this point is known as the focal length. You could literally take a ruler and measure that. And we say that it's a real focal length because the rays actually pass through that point. And we say that it's positive. Now, if we look at the other style of mirror, our convex mirror, you get similar results. Except now it's a diverging mirror. So the rays travel along, they hit the mirror at a, and you can, you can see right here this green imaginary line where they're bouncing the rays off. The parallel rays hit that green imaginary line and bounce off so that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And all these reflected rays are diverging. They're never going to meet up on the left-hand side of this particular optical device, this particular mirror. However, if I trace each of these lines back, they appear to come from a point behind the mirror. And all of these lines, if I trace them back, appear to come to this particular spot here. So this is my focal point, and we say that it's a virtual focal point because the rays aren't actually there. They appear to come from that spot. In other words, if I stood on the left-hand side of this lens so that I wasn't blocking this light source and looked into this actual optical device, this convex mirror, it would look like that light source is coming from a point where my hand is on the right-hand side behind the mirror. So we say that's a virtual focal point, and my focal length would be from where my hand is to that green line, green imaginary line at the front of the mirror, and that focal length would be negative.